Hello everybody, um, today I have another video on flows. So I had this requirement from the success community and what the requirement was is once when you're in opportunity, right, and you have related contacts, contact roles. Now the requirement here is anytime the tracking number on opportunity gets populated, and if the contact role has an email associated with it, I need to send an email to that contact. And the contact role I'm assuming is primary. So uh, that's the requirement, right? Now, in any ideal case scenario, if the contact was a direct lookup field, it would be much easier to be able to look for that contact dot email and find out if it is null or not and then send an email to that contact. But since it is an opportunity contact role, which is a standard object, um, it doesn't have it, it cannot be directly accessed by workflow or a process builder um, unless you want to write a trigger on it. And there's an idea on Salesforce and it's been there for 10 years. I think it's, it's under product team review, but um, there is no date on it yet. So I tried out with a flow and it works. So I wanted to I just wanted to share this with you. Okay. So um, I'm going to create the flow from scratch here uh, for all the beginners who are new to flow. It would be a good way to expose you. Let's start. So first of all, go to setup and flow and then create a new flow. Now the reason I'm using a flow is because flow has access to the opportunity contact role object and you can look up and search for um, email like that. So first of all, since we are using an opportunity and we have the opportunity ID, now what we need to do is get that contact ID so we can look for the contact ID and get the email from that so that we can now compare if the email is empty or not. Make sense? So I'm just going to have a record lookup because I'm only expecting single um, opportunity contact role why because one opportunity can have only one primary contact so let's say look up for look up contact right that's my um, first element and then I'm going to say look up for we need to look up first opportunity contact role and that meets the following criteria means what are the criteria that opportunity contact role needs to meet First of all, let's see what are the fields in opportunity contact role, right? We have contact ID, created by, created date, standard fields, ID is deleted, is primary, and so on. And there's an opportunity ID. So what we need to do is we are, we are going to pass opportunity ID from the process builder, which you will see um, later on. So we are passing that opportunity ID from the process builder, and we are... So that means we'll need to create a variable. This is a variable we're passing from the class builder. So just bear with me here. Um, I'm going to say text since it will be ID. I'm going to say input and output and hit OK. So that op ID, meaning opportunity ID, it doesn't have a value yet, which this value will be passed from the class builder. So that means the following criteria. Also, just to make sure we got only one contact, I'm going to say is primary equals true because if I don't do this, one opportunity might have multiple contacts. So we want to make sure we're only grabbing the primary one. So once we have the opportunity contact role that meets the following criteria, what we do is uh, we grab a field of that, right? Uh, what do we need here? We need the contact ID because we need to send an email to the contact. So we're saying contact ID, assign it to a variable to make it simple for the purposes of this tutorial I'm going to just create a variable not an s object variable if you want to know more about s object variable I have another tutorial on that go check it out so I'm going to say contact ID and let's make it input and output to be safe and so contact ID equals con ID now what's going to happen is it's going to look up the opportunity contact role with this uh, criteria and uh, it is going to grab contact ID and will assign it to this variable. Now, we are assigning it to this variable because we will need it in the next step. So next step is once we look up the contact role, actually, let me rename it to contact role. 
because now we'll be looking up contact. So I'm going to really make a contact rule that makes more easier, right? And also when you're starting uh, with the flow, always make sure that you add a description. Contact rule. Just add a description, uh, it will be easier for you or your fellow uh, administrators to see what you're doing. Now, we can look up and we we now add um, look up for contact because now we have the contact ID to find the contact, all right? So we do look up contact and uh, I'm going to look up for contact. Contact. And now what's the criteria? The criteria will be ID equals, let's type ID. ID should be equal to the contact ID we just created in earlier field and we assigned the value to that. So con ID, because we already assigned the value to this one from the con opportunity contact code, okay? And uh, which meets this criteria. Now we need to extract email from there. So if you are used to or if you have exposure to software um, or workbench so it's basically saying that select id from contact select id email from contact where id equals colon on id okay so that's like the software uh, of it so so i'm assigning the record to e from email um, and let's create a new variable to hold that email. So I'm going to say con email, and there is no uh, data type for email, um, so we can just uh, use a text one for that. Let's just say input and output, click OK. And once you have done this, hit OK. So now let's start connecting this to. So in the first step, we did look for the contact role. Now in the second step, we are looking for contact and we got the email, right? Now, uh, our use case is we want to check if the email is null or not. So how do we do that is there is something called the season element on your palette on the left hand side. So you just drag and drop the season and just say check contact. I'm saying contact email not no. All right. Now resource is contact email because that's that should have a value, right? And uh, I'm going to say either a I can say does not equal to null or I like this one better is null and then make it false. That basically is saying that contact email is not null and click OK so that's our only condition right click OK let's just connect these two now this is where things get more interesting so the flow not only have all these cool features cool elements here it also allows you to directly access email alerts so whatever email alerts, quick actions, you can do um, pretty much whatever you want as long as you have those quick actions here or email alerts. So step one, which I skipped in this video, is first you need to have an email alert associated with the contact so that it shows up here. So I have two email alerts in my org and that's why I can see two email alerts here. So let's just pull the contact email and the easiest part is send me contact email I'm going to say that and all you need to do is just pass that record ID of the contact right because it's, it's an email alert associated with contact which is why you will pass email the variable contact ID because it's contact related email um, email alert click OK and now when you try to um, join this together you'll get this pop-up because uh, it's a decision element so it's going to ask so since we only only have one um, decision you could have multiple decision if else and if else but we have only one so it's going to go to here if it's if the
the email is not empty. If the email is empty, you could probably do something else um, and then it, that will be the default outcome. For this tutorial, let's just um, keep it here and always there should be a start element. If you try to save it without start element, it will still save it, but it will give you a warning. So it's good to have the start element and then let's save it. So send contact email from opportunity. And it is an auto launched flow because an auto launch flow are the flows which are called from uh, somewhere else within the system. Okay, so <clears throat> click OK. And uh, I'm not skipping the description, but description are very important when you are doing any kind of development. So please uh, make sure you add descriptions. And let's close it. And one very important step is don't forget to activate this. If you do not activate this, you're not going to see, see this in the process builder when you try to call it. Now let's switch back to the process builder because so the process builder is uh, pretty straightforward. Um, there are plenty of tutorials if you have never seen process builder. For this process builder, I'm just going to show what I already have for the sake of time. So, all right. Um, if you just want to start process builder, basically is it's pretty intuitive to start with. You select your object, and then I'm going to say when a record is created or edited. And the advanced is basically if the record is uh, eval if you want the record to evaluate multiple times in a single transaction. This is a little bit a step up if you're just beginning so uh, keep it unchecked if you're not sure because it might cause recursion and your flow process might fail so let's keep it unchecked right and then uh, this is my criteria so it is just like workflow if you have done workflow before it is just like workflow but a lot more powerful than workflow so you basically will enter your criteria name could be anything um, anything which makes sense to you and then conditions are met you can also choose formula just like in workflow you can you could have conditions are met and this will let you pick the fields from the object or you could uh, use formula so I'm saying uh, trail analytics is because that's my namespace so don't worry about that opportunity dot tracking number is not null is null is false and then I'm saying uh, is changed so anytime somebody changes a tracking number, I want that contact to get email. Okay, and one more uh, condition we have is that contact email should not be null, but we can't do that in the process builder because it won't have access to that object, the junction object. But we already took care of that in the flow, so we don't need to worry about it here. Okay, so save it, and then the immediate action will be call the flow. So you can name it call opportunity related contact flow and then when you click on it it will show you all the flows which are active um, actually let me show you this process quickly because this is kind of important step here so this is how this is going to look like you can see all the fields right here okay so if I start typing tracking number you can see it right here so that's that's the easy part and then once you are here, and this is how we'll add, so action type, flows, and uh, call flow, no, something. And then here you see all the flows in your system. So we just created, I think this one, and all the flow variables will be available here. So if I scroll down, you can see we have con email, ID, and op ID because those are the variables we created. But we need op ID because op ID will be passed from the opportunity, and you can say field reference and find the field that is the opportunity ID. So let's find opportunity ID. So yeah, and uh, we are done. So save it and activate it, and that should take care of uh, your business use case. And it will anytime you anytime you edit this uh, record and change the tracking number, you should uh, get an email 
as long as you have the uh, contact role primary which has a valid email address you should get an email um, I hope this was helpful for you and uh, uh, thank you for your time I'll see you in next video